Good morning. Good morning. I hope everybody is doing well. Welcome to Coffee with Kay. I'm so excited to have Dr. Tori Como Plowden on today. She is a reproductive endocrinologist, and she's going to share a little bit about what is happening in the assisted reproductive technology, the fertility world, as a response to this COVID virus. Good morning, Dr. Plowden. Hi, how are you? Thanks I'm so me. excited to um, talk with you. I know that uh, things have been really crazy for all of us, and I'm grateful that you're willing to come and spend this time with us today. Now, for those of you who don't know her, because many of you probably already know of her because uh, she is just a force in the field. She's double board certified in OBGYN and in reproductive endocrinology, also known as fertility. Um, she's got many, many interests. And um, in addition to all of her, and she actually went to Howard University for undergrad, HU. You know. <laughs> um, she went to GW for uh, her medical degree and her master's of public health. And she is now a lieutenant colonel uh, and she is serving at the, uh, la, 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 la. <laughs> so sorry. Army Medical Center in North Carolina. In North Carolina. And she is over the uh, obstetrics and gynecology department. So um, let's just go ahead and get right into it. And I can see, yes, thank you guys for logging in. If there is anyone who is seeing this, who has questions, or they want to um, share their feedback or share things that they've heard, uh, Dr. Plowden is here to answer your questions, to allay your fears, um, and to share information. I know that the American Society of Reproductive Medicine has already put out um, some recommendations for all fertility doctors. Um, so let's just jump right into it, Tori. What have they said? What is going on right now? Uh, what are families um, looking at for the foreseeable future? Okay, so ASRM put out some guidelines um, last week, last week, that basically um, are telling us that for most fertility procedures that we should be halting those for now. Um, in the setting of the COVID outbreak, you certainly are you certainly have been following the news and you have seen how so many uh, people are without PPE. Uh, many, uh, the Surgeon General of the United States has suggested that we limit um, elective procedures. Uh, I know that some people don't like the term elective, but really I think it's better if you use the term non-urgent. Non so there are many, many, many procedures that are on hold right now, for instance, colonoscopies, uh, cataract surgery, et cetera. No one would argue that those procedures are not important or necessary, but it, they won't, uh, but they're not life threatening in that immediate moment. And so putting them off for a few months is what is suggested right now. And so for people looking at, um, you know, age requirements, for instance, I know that some clinics have age cutoffs. Um, have the clinics come out with any kind of, uh, or has the ASRM or any of these governing bodies, have they come out with recommendations on how people who are caught in between, you know, kind of what's going on in the larger world and the clinic's um, requirements to be able to move forward? I think that right now it might be a little bit too early. Uh, this would have to be something that individual clinics would be able to discuss with their uh individual physicians to kind of determine what this would be like for them. Uh, the thought though, is that by decrease, uh, excuse me, putting off the treatment for a couple of months, that ultimately it should not make a huge impact in fertility. I, I certainly am aware that, uh, the, you know, as people feel, people feel their clock ticking um, and as time moves on, um, that certainly is a concern. We're hoping that these restrictions won't have to last for an extended amount of time. It's not clear today when we would be able to start doing um, our typical uh, normal fertility procedures again, um, but we're hoping that it wouldn't take forever. And, and, and I know that there's a lot of angst out there related to that. Um, certainly in the setting of fertility preservation, so in uh, people who have active cancer, 
and who are trying to undergo um, in vitro fertilization techniques, advanced reproductive technology techniques in order to um, preserve the possibility of becoming pregnant. Uh, those procedures are considered more urgent uh, because we want to retrieve the eggs prior to the person starting their chemotherapy. And so those procedures will certainly still be moving forward, um, but other procedures are, are on hold for now. So um, what do we know about the impact of this COVID-19 virus on embryo? So not a lot is known on the COVID the COVID virus's impact on embryos specifically or pregnancy in general. Mm -hmm. um, there have just this past weekend, uh, a couple of days ago, there was a, a journal article that came out suggesting that perhaps people who are impacted um, with COVID during the later part of their pregnancy, that perhaps they can pass the virus on to their offspring. We do not know that that is 100% accurate. Um, but the, the studies certainly, as you can imagine, are in their infancy. Uh, initially, the thought was that uh, COVID virus did not uh, pass vertically, meaning from mother to child. Um, and again, those the reports that it may are questionable. We're not 100% sure if that's accurate. Um, right now, ASRM is recommending that we halt in, um, embryo transfer procedures. Uh, at this time, uh, because we really don't know the effects of the virus, uh, particularly in a person um, in the early part of pregnancy. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Again, for those of you who are just logging in on Facebook and Instagram, we've got Dr. Tori Plowden from the Womack, Ar Womack Army Medical Center. She is a reproductive endocrinologist, also known as a fertility doctor, talking about the impact of the COVID-19 virus on fertility cycles and on uh, pregnancy. And, and Dr. Plowden just shared, there's so much that's not known that um, in, out of an abundance of caution, the recommendation has been to, to just stop. And the word that she used, I like that word, was non-urgent, right? Non-urgent uh, medical procedures um, just to protect both the intended parents and the embryo. So that's great. So. When, how long do you think this will last? Because, you know, many families, they save their whole lives really to be able to get to the point where they're ready to move forward. And, and right now, everything's on hold. It, it really is unclear. I, I certainly understand that patients are very frustrated. I want the patients to understand that your physicians are frustrated too. We don't know. Um, there isn't a really good... Uh, estimate as to how long this is going to last. It may be several months. Um, the ASRM has committed to trying to reassess the situation um, every several weeks in order to see if they need to update their recommendations based on what is going on. I am fearful, based on the things that I'm reading, I am fearful that we have not yet reached the peak of this COVID. So I do not think, uh, I do not think based on the current evidence that um, we could expect that this would be uh, resolving within our country within the next several weeks. Um, it looks like it's probably going to be the next several months, um, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for those who are thinking how long and they're worried and they're frustrated, what can they do right now that would put them, first of all, uh, reduce some of that anxiety and also put them in a position where they'd be more likely to be successful once they were able to move forward. So I think, in my opinion, the thing that is the hardest about this whole COVID outbreak for patients, physicians, and also just for anyone living in our, in, in our society today is this feeling of not being able to be in control. Um, I think that the idea of being in control is kind of like, it's not real, right? Like there's so many things that are beyond our control, but in our daily lives, we do have the power to go out to dinner or elect to participate in a certain activity or not participate in that activity. And that choice has largely been taken away um, in the setting of needing to stay inside and distance um, and participate in social distancing. And this is just certainly not what we're typically used to at all. And it's hard. Um, part of what I think 
fuel some of this anxiety is also not knowing when the end is coming. Like when we're going to, if someone told you we'd have to do this for two weeks, many people would say, okay, got it. I'm okay with that. If someone said, okay, it's going to be a month, you might think, okay, but it's harder when there's no end in sight. So I think that we need to reshape what you can do while you wait for your fertility clinics to reopen, because there's plenty that you can do uh, as a, as a, as a woman who is trying to become pregnant to make your health best in order to, um, in order to improve things whenever you finally do become pregnant. So focusing on your own health and nutrition, uh, certainly in this setting where we're not able to get out and go to the gym as often, you may have to become a little bit more creative with uh, the ways that you are able to move your body. So be that in-home uh, exercise, uh, be that walking around your neighborhood, as long as you're still socially distancing uh, from people, uh, maybe that includes yoga, um, that could in, in include lots of different ways to kind of get your body moving, keep your fitness up, uh, making sure that you are eating a healthy diet. Uh, there's no specific diet that is recommended um, when a person is trying to get pregnant, uh, but having an overall healthy diet in general, taking your prenatal vitamins, um, those are things that we definitely uh, want people to do. If you have any chronic underlying medical conditions, uh, trying to work to get those under control prior to become pregnant, prior to becoming pregnant is what is um, recommended. So for instance, if you are a person who has uh, hypertension, if you are a person who has diabetes, we certainly know that sometimes those conditions can worsen in pregnancy um, and, and or be impacted by pregnancy. Uh, the, the, and the pregnancy can also be impacted by those diseases, um, those pre-existing conditions. So if you can get those things under control um, before conceiving, that could decrease the likelihood of of experiencing complications or worsening of the disease uh, during pregnancy. So I want to dive into the, oh, you know what, before I do, we've got a question uh, from Kelly Popwell. What is the best way to stay positive and move ahead later than we planned? That is an excellent question. Um, I think that, so it's interesting because social distancing is happening, um, obviously. Uh, I believe that it is necessary and appropriate, um, but it may make us have to rethink ways that we stay connected. So I think that uh, fostering connections is important. So uh, recently, I, I had never used the Zoom platform, for instance, until just recently, uh, but I have had a, uh, a happy hour with uh, friends from medical school. I, I mean, from undergrad, I have had... Um, I'm like bringing out something right now, having a happy hour right now. I, I have had, um, I was involved in a book club meeting yesterday with some friends in a, a physician book club that I'm in. Um, and it might even sound like a little silly, but I thought that the connection, it was very real. It was very tangible, even though it was virtual. Um, I felt like, you know, we laughed and we uh, of the happy hour, we each had a drink. So we talked also about well, what are you drinking and what did you make and what's going on with you and what's updated. And truth be told, with my college friends, uh, several of us had not connected recently just because life is so busy um, with work and activities and, and shuffling the kids around to activities and shuffling ourselves around to activities that it kind of felt like um, an opportunity to slow down and connect. Um, so I think making sure that you uh, continue to, to foster connections with people, even though they're virtual, is important. And I think that that is important, too, for your own mental well-being. Um, there's a lot of anxiety happening right now for, for, for all of us. I, I, would, I would almost say that everyone is feeling uh, somewhat anxious about all the things that are going on right now. And I think that um, mindfulness, uh, maybe doing some meditation, uh, is a way that you can kind of, when you feel these feelings of anxiety kind of revving up in yourself, literally just taking one minute or two minutes. Um, there are lots of free apps out there that are helpful. Um, and I have been sharing resources with my uh, physician colleagues uh, specifically because I'm also concerned about them um, as we face this, this unprecedented uh, pandemic. Um, I've been sharing free resources for medicine.